it's a swap meet like you have never seen. Pieces and people from all over the world coming here for this. It truly is a real brotherhood. From the action of making deals for rare parts to the action on the track where vintage bikes are put to the test. How did this become the world's biggest and best antique motorcycle swap meet? We take you to the heart of the story in this special American Drive. Saturday morning. While many wake up on Labor Day weekend to the sounds of birds chirping, gentle alarms, or neighbors' lawnmowers, there's a different kind of sound coming from this place this time of year. The purr of a puttering three or four wheeler, the sputter of a scooter, the holler of a Harley, and the cry of an Indian. People from all around the world coming to this mecca of parts and pieces, a living museum in the making, the Chief Blackhawk Antique Motorcycle Swap Meet. Dave Hollingsworth is the man behind this long-standing tradition. Hey Dave, this is your mess out here. What do you think? It's a great day. It's a wonderful day. There, there's outstanding. It's outstanding. Uh, what is this as we look around and see all these motorcycles from all over the world, it seems? This is our 48th year of uh, uh, Chief Blackhawk's Antique Motorcycles Swap Meet and Bike Show. Hey, what got you started? What got you thinking, we should put together a show and we think people from all around would come and bring all these cool bikes? We were uh, uh, involved with the uh, Antique Motorcycle Club of America. Uh, there, there were some differences, but uh, uh, this show since 2012 has doubled, has doubled in size. New vendors are joining in to celebrate the past and build a future based on salvage and community. Oh, so many different brands of motorcycles, because there used to be, uh, what is it, uh, close to 150 American-made motorcycle companies, and there's only two left. So people come here to celebrate that, celebrate the heritage, the history, and, and to buy stuff. And, and to uh, add, find parts for their projects at home, like somebody's restoring one of these. So we all come here with our parts and, and trade. A lot of us just trade parts. So someone may be coming from Texas with a part that someone from Oklahoma needs or someone from North Dakota needs to finish their project. We have, uh, last year we have, uh, we had uh, attendance from 38, 37 states and 13 foreign countries. Has motorcycle uh, ownership and rebuilding grown? Does it keep so, going? Uh, it has grown. Um, the, the Easy Rider days, all those guys, are us. I mean, uh, we're trying to share what we we have experienced. You can find just about anything here, and the people, well, they speak for themselves. So now, how about this? Can you take us around, and introduce us to some of the characters out here on this lot? Oh yeah, yeah, I can. Let's rock and roll. It's been going on for so many years. I actually um, have been coming for over 40 years to this event. My husband. Um, who has passed now. Um, this was his favorite event out of, out of all the things that we've ever done in our life, I guess, and we never would have missed it. And so, actually, when our son was born in 1984, he was six weeks old and we brought him to this event <laughs> just because we can't miss it ever. So you just keep on coming back? I just keep coming back. I'm selling some of his um, extra memorabilia that um, is... Um, not in the National Motorcycle Museum that I, he had um, a lot of, and so I just set up, and I like seeing all the people, and um, it's just it's like coming back to a family reunion when you come back to this every year. 
quite a sense of community around here, huh? Yes, there's a huge sense of community. And um, if, if I didn't come back, people would be wondering what's wrong with me, probably. <laughs> but her favorite part is actually seeing these classic bikes in action on the track. A highlight for many who come here to see them run. Are you ready for this? like the races that they do on Friday night and my husband and I were instrumental in the very beginning of starting those and then um, we sold it off to a, another person but I really like um, the, the races on Friday night and just um, just the community of, of seeing all these people that are from all over the states and and um, all over the countries there a lot of people from other countries come to this every year and on the grounds they are riding just about anything and everything we get we get homemade stuff like this enjoying the moment, the experience. Oh, awesome. This is wrong. Davenport is, uh, in my opinion, it's the best antique motorcycle meet in the world, in my opinion. And I've been coming here for uh, many, many years and uh, just seeing old friends, uh, searching for parts, seeing the old bikes, you know, old friends like Red. Yeah. And uh, it's just a great time. It's really, um, I really look forward to it. It's, it's probably one of the top two things I look forward to all year. You could call this his therapy, dealing with pancreatic cancer. This event lifts him up and charges him up for his own show in Milwaukee. You know, it's easy to get depressed or get down a little bit, but uh, motorcycles have always been a, a great love of mine throughout my whole life. Uh, being on a motorcycle is really the only place in the world I can find true peace. You know, and, uh, I just relax. And uh, so I thought, you know, I'll just uh, combine motorcycles with helping people. I've always been a helper since I was a kid. And uh, we came up with the high voltage uh, vintage motorcycle and chopper show for cancer research. We catch a ride with Bob to see how this swap meet fuels so many people. He's searching for rare parts. Witness protection, witness <laughs> protection, no. Me too. <laughs> hey Bob, what do you most like about this, this event? Well, really, I like to see people in their hobbies get together. I really do, you know, but it's got a lot of other things. Now, look at that engine right there. Yeah, we kind of lost him for a moment as something caught his eye. Bob Peterson is known for buying old, rusted-out cars and bikes and bringing them back to life. He says he's only looking, but you know how that goes. I don't need a bunch of rust, you know. So you're not going to go home with two or three motorcycles and get your wife mad at you? No. Not this time. I have. <laughs> Listen, that some on that car, she's just barely over. And while Bob is looking to bring things back to life, Dave takes us back inside to see some beauties that are already fully restored. Tell me the significance of this bike and what it means this weekend. This bike is one of the uh, bikes that will be going around the track. Uh, in honor of uh, one of our friends that are uh, suffering from the effects of Agent Orange. So his final wish was to be able to go around the track in one of these? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Next to it, this bike originally sold for $1,500. And now uh, you can see the value that, the, that it's come up to is 25000 And I've seen these go for more if it was unrestored original, it'd be uh, fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars. So unrestored sometimes is more valuable than a restored motorcycle. Yes, because it's original. It's all orig paint, original paint, uh, original motor. Um, was a '61 Pan Ed right here, the red and white or red and white one. What do you like most about this motorcycle? Uh, uh, that's. This is the style of bike, the model of bike that I started out on.
Are they really that different from what's out there today? How do they ride? This is a 1934. 1934, wow. And this is a 1946. Incredible, beautiful pieces of machinery. Recently, in the last few years, Indians making a comeback, and this is like the sportster of Indians. So you see, I see a unique shifter, right? That must be the shifter up there on the side. Yeah. Uh, so instead of it being on the handle, uh, yep. these were down on the side. Yep, the shifter and the clutch. Uh, clutch is down there on the foot. It, it rocks. It's like uh, heel to wall and toe to go and just rock it back and push on the brake to stop, rock it forward, to, it's like a clutch to go. So when you're riding one of these, you're using pretty much everything it looks like. Yeah. All your hands and all your feet have work to do. And for Dave, his work for the most part is done. Now he can just talk about his hobby, his passion, the spirit of America, like you'll find no place else. Talk about American Drive, the wild ride continues. If you like inspiring stories just like this, check out our YouTube channel, Gary Mativier, for more. Add the heart of the story with Gary Mativier podcast.